My name is Riley Beto. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Lausanne School of Engineering at York University. So I did my undergrad, master's, PhD, and teacher's college at Queen's University. I focused on my master's and PhD was in geotechnical engineering. I actually didn't know I was going to start a PhD, but I went on a canoe trip with a friend and we paddled along the Missinabe River in Northern Ontario. And when I came back, I was looking at the photos that I had taken on that trip. And there's a couple photos of us in the canoe and, you know, having fun, but every third picture was a slope or a landslide along the banks of the river. And I sort of putting them all together, I realized I had taken hundreds of pictures of these. And I said, maybe there's something to this that I'm really intrigued and interested in. And, and so that's what got me interested in studying landslides. What I'm really interested in is instead of just doing physical models, I really wanted to get out and see landslides and, and try and better understand um, real world applications and how we can actually now take what I've been learning um, inside a laboratory and take that outside. And so with my students here this summer, we've been working on doing just that. So we have a drone that we use to take images of a landslide or slope. Uh, for example, here in Toronto, we've been looking at Scarborough Bluffs. And we're taking a look at these slopes and trying to build and create these models. So with these models, they're digital elevation models. And that allows us to better understand not only a failure if it's happened, so if we're actually looking at a landslide, but it also allows us to look at the geometry, the topography, without actually being out there to measure in the field. So you can imagine trying to scale a 45 degree to a 90 degree cliff or slope. It's really challenging. But by flying a drone, taking images in the field and bringing those back and developing these models, we're actually able to do that with much greater ease. So, so with these types of models, really, really neat options are to be also do continuous monitoring. So instead of just taking a snapshot in time, is to do multiple visits to a site. And by building these models, we can actually track the changes. So if something happens that's out of the ordinary, uh, we, would under, we would see that. So we'd actually be able to build up a repository of sort of how these slopes are changing and evolving. And that allows us to better predict when a larger catastrophic event may actually happen. The drone we have is a DJ-1 Inspire, which is a fantastic quadcopter. And so with this quadcopter, uh, it comes with a built-in camera. And the camera is on a gimbal, so it gives us full access. We can pan, tilt, and rotate uh, to give us whatever it is the view that we want. And what we're able to do with this 4K camera is take both video and images, which is fantastic. So we can actually take a video of the surrounding area. We can take our images, uh, which we then bring in for post-processing. Uh, with a, a drone that's you know the size of your computer monitor, we can take it easily out into the field to any site that we choose, get the images that day, and be modeling by the next day. Uh, so it really gives us um, and as a researcher or what, whatever application you're using, it puts us in the driver's seat so we can go where we want to and get the images when we want them to, to be taken. So the hope is that this research will help people. I want to be able to tell people that they live somewhere that's safe and that they are going to, going to be safe and for those who are in areas that might be at greater risk, that they also know that and that we can better prepare them um, and better predict when, those, when that risk will happen um, and, and really try and remove the consequences and, and, and remove them from being in danger.